In this tutorial I'd like to talk about smart proxies but before I move on to smart proxies and explain what those are I also want to talk about file structures and how working with Sony Vegas can really simplify things for us. So let me just show you some footage that was given to me by a good friend Alex McLeod from AMAC Films and he's given me footage from two different cameras. So this file here is footage from an EX1 and this file here is footage from a 7D. Now the 7D is very straightforward, there's the footage, get on with it, no problems at all. However, when I go to the BPAV, double click on there, I've got a clip folder and then I've got uh, all these different folders and if I double click in there, I've got, goodness me, I've got all these different files to try and find the actual one that I want. Now I can actually see that there is the MP4 file, so I could get to it that way. But look what happens when I actually search for it inside of Sony Vegas. So if I actually go to that same folder, so Alex McLeod and it's AMAC Films. So there's AMAC Films. Go into there and I open up with the one we had problems with was the BPAV. Double click on there. Go into the clip bin. Open up one of the clip bins. Double click on that and it goes straight to the footage for me. Okay, so Sony Vegas is smart enough to be able to cut through all the other bits and pieces and get straight to the one I actually want, saving me a lot of headache trying to navigate to it through my own Windows Explorer. Just wanted to point that out, but sometimes when you bring footage into Sony Vegas, it doesn't play back at its full frame rate. So here is this red footage that I had from the previous tutorial. I'm just going to scroll in and go onto my timeline. If you use the middle mouse button, the, the scroll wheel, you can actually scroll in and out from your cursor actually using that as well. So I, I'm scrolling in and out and then just move my selection along so we can see this red footage. Okay, so this is red footage, but if I actually play, look at the playback rates. If I push play, look at the frames per second. Three frames, two frames per second. One frame per second. Now there's an awful lot that's going on, hit the space bar to stop, there's an awful lot that's going on that causes the computer to go slow. Firstly, there's an awful lot of information. If we look at the actual item again, so let's navigate back down to that one, and red footage. We look at the size of it, it's 4.1k by 2.3k. So it's huge, it's a massive file size, it's what, that's something like four times the size of HD? It's huge anyway. It's a really big file, so there's an awful lot of data to send down the wires. And this is sometimes a problem that hard drives can't actually ship the information to the computer fast enough. This is why running external hard drives can be a bit of an issue when you're dealing with big footage like this. The other thing is, of course, Sony Vegas has to process it for playback. Now, the processing isn't quite such a big job, but it's still a big job and hard work on the computer. Okay, so we're not getting the full playback that we want. So what Sony Vegas allow us to do is to create a video proxy, which is a replacement file, which is going to be much smaller and will give us probably a playback rate that's going to be actually the same as the project. So it's going to create a file that's really small that will play back at the right frame rate. However, that is not the item that's used in the final export. When you do the final export, unless you've changed some settings, we'll talk about settings in a moment, Sony Vegas is going to use the original 4K file. The video proxy is just there to aid you in editing, to do quick previews, to get through things really quickly. Okay, so you can only see a smart proxy when you're working in either draft mode or preview mode. If you go up to good or best, you're going to have the full file size, okay? So if you are in draft or preview, and I usually work in preview, you're going to be able to see the video proxy. Now, if you've got lots and lots of clips on your timeline and you need to find the file, you can right click on it and go to select in project media list. And then it takes you to the project media. Then you can right click on the clip itself and go down to create video proxy. And when you do create video proxy, incidentally, you see these little underlined letters here. You see the X is underlined. If you have this menu up and you just tap X, it does it for you. Those underlined letters are ways of saying if you tap it when you've got this menu up, it'll do it quickly for you. Just as a, a, one of those bits of information to tuck away. If ever you've got a menu and you've got little underlined letters, that's what you should do. You just tap the letter and it does it to you. And it is now creating a video proxy. Okay, I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to let it go through. The video proxy is being made. You can cancel the operation. 
but basically it's going to create a much smaller version which we can use for editing however that is not what we're going to use when we do final rendering our export at the end I'm gonna pause the video and come back to you after this is finished okay so this is coming to an end now I'm not gonna to lie to you you can see it's making progress down here this is a slow process this doesn't happen quickly if you have an old computer the newer computer you have the faster your computers are you might not even need to use a proxy you might be able to get good playback if you've got a really good video graphics card okay so just because I took a long time to do this doesn't mean yours will this computer is over three years old and it has a very small graphics card it's actually a laptop so it took a long time to render that through however it is now going to be using the video proxy to play back and if I go back to the beginning of the clip and I push play let's look at the frame rate 23.976 it's pretty much 24 frames a second which is the project settings so that's pretty much working okay the quality is not so good but it's sufficient for me to actually be able to do my editing in okay so that's how we can create a video proxy how do we make sure that the video proxy isn't then actually used for rendering which is a big issue if you remember I said that uh, its video proxy is only used under draft and preview if you're under good or best if I just go to good auto you'll see that uh, you see that it pops back up and gives me a much better view again okay so it's not using the video proxy anymore but if I go back to the preview auto it's going to go back to the video proxy a new file has been created which is put into the same folder as this original file they'll be next to each other which is actually going to be the video proxy so if I actually have a little look let's go to that one and go on my D drive and find it Sony Vegas red and there you go we've got two files this is the original file from video blocks and this is the video proxy file okay so you can see that's 65 64 and a half meg this one over here is 827 meg so you can see why Vegas is struggling with such a big file to play it through so say if you've got the right video card and you've got the right setup on your system and you've got a nice new system you might be able to play this straight off but my system's old and can't cope so you need to factor in the time it's going to take to convert the, f the red footage that you have got to video proxies but once they're created you do all your editing with them so it's sort of an upfront job an upfront time cost but the end result is you can edit much faster and you can make your decisions much better based on the video proxy and then you can still look at the original file by changing your preview options if you really need to see something precisely and as long as you've got your settings right it will export properly using the original file when it comes to export now let's just talk about that very briefly this is where we can find the project settings you can also get to them by the way from file and properties so file properties is the same thing you can see it's got the same icon there brings up the same box notice down here it says full resolution rendering quality is based at good if you've changed that to draft or preview then you're going to find that you export using the video proxy but if you leave it as good or best you're going to find that when you export you will export using the original full size quality file so by default it's at good and if you're really worried about quality of course you can always take it up to best but as long as it's not at draft or preview it's going to export using good or best as long as your export settings are set up correctly so let me just very briefly run through these if you go to file render as you can actually navigate to one of the outputs now I'm gonna just show you on a an mp4 here I'm just gonna show you on this mpeg4 don't worry too much about this we are going to go over this later on in the series but if I select this particular setting and I go to the customize button I can actually look at the project settings here's the project settings and see what it says it's going to use video rendering quality use project settings which means it's using the settings that we set up here and unless you fiddle with these unless you go away and say no always use something else it's going to use whatever you've set up in your project so you shouldn't need to worry about this one so I'm going to click cancel and cancel and just say whatever you have set up in your project settings as long as you've not changed those templates here at full resolution rendering quality will determine which file it uses if it's good or best it will be the full quality file if it's draft or preview it will use the video proxy 
Why would you ever use the proxy? Because you want to knock something out very quickly to show a client progress or some sort of editing decision you've made. It's going to take a lot less time to render out a video proxy than it will the full file size. However, it obviously won't look anything like as good. So I'm going to cancel, leave it at that setting and go on from there. Zoom in using my middle mouse wheel and we're ready for the next tutorial. My name's Andrew Davis. I hope you found this useful and thank you for watching.